Hi, uh, I'm Andy, and um, I'm here to talk about an open source tool I developed uh, called Pronto GUI. And uh, this tool is for Go developers who want to create a GUI front end and, and do that within the Go programming environment. So I hope you find it interesting. Let's start. So what is Pronto GUI? First is a Go module called GoLib. And this module is used to construct primitives to build a user interface. So you can think of primitives as being the, the logical things that you want to see in your user interface, such as a command button, a text field, and so on. Then there's an app that's written in Flutter that does all the rendering and handles the user interaction. Um, and this, this comes with all the niceties that we see in apps today, especially Material 3 design, and uh, cross-platform capabilities. And then the app has inside of it uh, what I call embodiments that allow you to uh, define the look and feel and the behavior of the primitives once you're showing them on the screen. So, you know, a button, for example, you could have an outline button versus a text button and so on. So how does this work? So you have your Go program and you import the golib, and you build the GUI using the primitives, and then you wait for events. Meanwhile, you fire up your application, and it establishes communication through gRPC to the golib. Immediately, a full update is sent over to the application, and you see the GUI that you just constructed. Meanwhile, as the user is interacting with the, with the GUI, events get streamed back to Golib where you can react to those inside of your program. So what I want to do is create, is to show you a quick demo of how this actually works. So let's say you have a program that's written in Go and you want to create a simple log viewer for like structured log items. So here's a napkin sketch of what it should look like. At the top, we have some filter settings, for example, time interval, uh, severity levels for the log items, as well as looking for log items that contain a certain text. And then below that, we want to show that into a table where we can look at the uh, we can actually look at the log items. So let's look at some code. The first thing we do is we initialize Pronto GUI, and then we establish a local endpoint. Uh, for the application to connect to it. Next, we start building our GUI. And uh, so the first thing we do is we create a, a text item at the top and we give it some embodiment information to stylize it. Uh, but the common pattern that we do here is we, we specify the primitive and then the options for the primitive. And this is very common with other kinds of environments uh, such as React.js. And then we go on to create the time interval choice and um, with, a, with a heading, and then we group that together. And then we create our checkboxes for, for the severity levels, and we group those together. And then our message filter um, for typing in the text to, to filter the messages by. And now we create a table primitive to show all of the uh, log items. Lastly, we tell Pronto GUI we want this to be our to be our GUI. Then we go into a for loop, and the first thing we do is we retrieve the log items based on the fields of the primitives that we've just created. Now the fields uh, they have default values at this point, but when you when the user is interacting with it, they're changing those field values and they're showing up here automatically. And so every time you go around to the top of the loop. We're getting, we're, we're filtering new log items. We take those log items and we convert them into primitives that can be shown as rows in the table. We set the rows of the table at this point, and then we wait for events to happen. And then lastly, there's just a couple of functions that we use to convert uh, log item information into primitives to be shown as cells within the table. So let's see this actually work. So what we do is we go ahead and launch our Go program. 
Then we launch our application. And right away, you can see the GUI being built right on the screen. And then we can page through the log items. Now we go up to the top and we change the interval to the last day. And you can see the information is being changed dynamically. And we can change the severity levels. And then we can go in here and we can type in some text here to filter by. So what, what, we, what we've done basically is with about 150 lines of code and about three hours of work, we've created a complete GUI that looks rather nice, uh, you know, and it's very compatible with the stuff we see today. And I'd also like to mention that when we did that, we didn't have to shift our mental model from Go into some other environment like React or what have you. Um, we were able to just hop in and start doing it. So all of the repos, all the source code for the demo as well as GoLib and the app are available on the Pronto GUI uh, GitHub site. Feel free to check it out. And um, yeah, I'm available on the Gopher Slack as well and by email. And I'd like to hear what you guys think of it. And uh, let me know too if you're interested in contributing. Thank you.